this blue dress in the case here is one of the first dresses made by Nellie Don, um, the Nellie Don label. And this is a classic example of what Nell Donnelly was going for. When she started her company, she was looking to create affordable dresses that were casual, that could be worn around the house for doing housework, but still look good, still feel feminine, and not be expensive. And be machine washable, or at least washable. Um, so her early dresses were made primarily of linen or cotton. And while today you might not want to machine wash linen and toss it in a dryer, at the time, you know, hand washing linen and line drying it is perfectly fine. You could wash this. It wasn't silk. It wasn't wool that was going to shrink up. And she added just a little touch to her plain dresses. You notice this one just has a couple of decorative buttons, a little bit of lace. Her first dresses all retailed for $1.98. And they didn't change that price for decades for the basic dress. So it was something that was affordable. At one point, um, I have read numbers that said anywhere from 25% to, to a bit more of the dresses sold in this country were made by the Donnelly Garment Company because they were, they were inexpensive, they were stylish, and they were cleanable. They could be cleaned and they were comfortable. She brought, Nell Donnelly brought a lot of innovations into the garment industry. Besides the assembly line approach that she used for the manufacturing itself, she also felt that it was important to offer incentives to her employees, to attract good employees, to keep good employees, because as a business owner, if you have employees who are comfortable in their job, happy in their job, feel that they are being treated well, they're more likely to stay. And the more, the longer you have an employee who knows what they're doing, the better they can get at doing their job. So for her, it made good business sense to reward her employees. She was the first person to, she offered a retirement pension plan in the 1920s. She offered um, free medical care. The company employed a doctor and a nurse who were on, who were on duty at the company. She offered free child care. They had a daycare on site, so theoretically every day could be take your child to work day. They offered meals to their employees. They had a cafeteria, and if you were working at mealtime, you were given your meal. So with those kind of benefits, nobody else had done anything like that before. And we have employee pins from, from Nell Donnelly, you know, 10 year service, 20 year service, 30 year service, um, people when they got a job there they stayed. Eventually Kansas City became, um, the garment industry here became unionized. It was all throughout the garment industry except for the Donnelly Garment Company. The other companies were unionizing to get the same benefits that were being offered at the Donnelly Garment Company. And the people who worked for Nell Donnelly didn't see a need to unionize because, well, they already had all of, they already had those benefits anyway. When she sold her company in 1957 and she retired, the people who bought that company, there were some statements made, interviews given that said, well, you know, these two men knew a little bit more about running a country than this little old lady here. And so the first thing that they did to improve their their bottom line and improve their profit was they eliminated all the benefits. Within six years, they were in federal court twice being sued for suppressing people trying to organize unions. First thing they did, get rid of the benefits. First thing the employees did was bring in the union. And the company was eventually unionized. And because now they were trying to get back the benefits that the unions had gotten for the other company, because Donnelly Garment Company offered them in the first place. And it was just the cycle. The people who bought the Donnelly Garment Company, they changed the name to Nellie Don. People know the company as Nellie Don. That was the label that Nell Donnelly put in her clothing, but it was never the official name of the company when she worked there. 
that was something that the people who bought it changed it because everybody called it Nellie Don anyway. So, you know, it made, it made sense to do. They instituted some other changes which weren't very good for the company long term. I mentioned that Nell Donnelly, her entire concept for her company to start with was to make affordable, stylish, washable house dresses, basically, um, for around the house. And she did make, they did make other everyday clothing, you know, something you might wear that wasn't just a house dress. And, but it was aimed at a very specific audience, and it had been for years, I mean, kind of the housewife and the housewife and the grandma. So in the 1950s in the United States, there all of a sudden in the late 50s, there started being a new group of consumers, and that was the teenager. Teenagers finally were starting to have money. They were doing babysitting jobs and whatever they were doing to get money. So you had a lot of teen magazines that started. You had um, the music industry, the sale of 45s and 33 LPs of vinyl went started coming and the main people who were buying those things were teenagers so the guys who were owned the company now got this great idea of okay we need to we need to shift we need to sell to the teenagers and forget all this stuff so they switched and they started making a lot of clothing for aimed at that teenager early 20s teenager college student age they didn't want anything to do with the Nelly Don dress they looked at that, that's what, their grand, that's what their moms and their grandmas wore. They didn't want to wear that. They wanted Bobby Brooks or whoever the latest was. They didn't want this. And it really, the, the company struggled. They eventually went bankrupt and out of business by 1977 because they kind of misread the market, misread the employees. They didn't understand exactly why Nell Donnelly had been successful. And she, she lived to see all of that happen. She didn't die until the early 1990s, and she was over 100. She, she saw all of this, and she knew, she may have had that personal affirmation that she was right in picking her market and serving that market with what they wanted, treating her employees well to get the best product, and she was right. And when that went away and they changed it, the company couldn't survive.